Hello, 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 Half-Life Gold Source, one of the most influential and amazing games of the 20th century. The year is 2004, we have just passed the turn of the century, and this 1998 classic is looking a little bit dated by modern standards. So what do we do to ensure that our brand stays relevant and the cash keeps flowing in? Well, Gabe, I think we could make a pretty penny by re-releasing Half-Life 1 in the Source engine that we've been working on. Wow, Brett, this is the best idea you've ever had. I really hope you don't get shot on the side of I-90 for it being high. Let it be done in the name of the Lord, and people will be grateful for the game that we have created for them so benevolently. <laughs> So, um, I don't think that this game turned out how they thought it would, to say the very least. So I think the first thing that you notice when you boot up this game is that the janitor needs to be given a goddamn raise. Look at this shiny ass floor. Goddamn, this is throughout the entire game and you're gonna see some shiny shit throughout the entire game no matter how dark the room is. For some goddamn reason, your gun's always gonna be shiny, and I swear the light mapping in this game just doesn't work, even though that's the whole point of porting it into Source, is so the lighting looks better. And the lighting works so much worse than the original Source game, because those are preset light maps. This reactive light map looks absolutely shit in this game, because it just fucking makes everything shiny. And that, it's, that just ruins the ambiance of the game. By the way, did I mention that the game bugged me to a point where I would have had to restart if I wasn't willing to noclip through a wall? At the very first part of the game, where you're trying to get past Barney, I had the HEV suit and everything and he wouldn't let me pass. Even though he said he would let me pass, he just never went to the goddamn um, little scanner or whatever. And... I just couldn't get past. But let's reset here, because I'm supposed to be talking about what's good about the game right now. Okay, well let's start. Boxes break faster. This is helpful, because the game kind of turns into box breaking simulator if you need more ammo. Um, and there's some funny ragdolls in the game, since it's in the Source Engine. And that concludes my good things about this game segment. I don't know if there was a reason behind this decision, or if it was just general insanity that made them do this, but for some reason, you do more damage to headcrabs in this game, rather than Half-Life 1. And that just doesn't make any sense to me, as two-shotting a headcrab seemed fine, especially with how fast you swung the crowbar. And in this game, one-shotting the headcrabs doesn't do anything different, it's just different for the sake of being different. It more confused me as a Half-Life 1 Gold Source player than actually helping me out by letting me move past the head crabs faster. Because in conjunction with the ragdolls, I couldn't even tell if they were dead half the time. Alright, so let me get into something that they actually did right, but with poor implementation. It is the fast weapon switch. It's not very good. I don't understand why it has to be so clunky and difficult to use in this game, but it exists and I appreciate that. Um, let's now talk about something that isn't implemented right and was a good idea. Barnacles. Um, barnacles were from Half-Life 1, as you know, and they worked perfectly fine in that game, but for some reason in this game it just straight up doesn't work at all. Um, actually, they did try to fix it in 2013, I think, which is, I'm gonna calculate almost 10 years after the launch of the game, so how ridiculous is that, that they're trying to fix a bug 10 years after it, but the barnacles, you can't see their fucking tentacles coming from the ceiling. That was the whole point of the enemy in Half-Life 1, was to restrict your movement in dark areas. In light areas, you were supposed to see them and avoid them. Or if you were more cautious, you were supposed to see them and avoid them throughout the entire game. 
you know, the, the whole point of the barnacles is that you don't have to kill them, and you also don't have to run into any of them throughout the entire series. But you still are forced to fucking run into them in this mode if you don't know where all of the- or in this game, if you don't know where all of them are from the previous game. Which is ridiculous, mind you, because the entire point of them was that you could evade them if you saw them. Right? These you have to be constantly looking up because the tentacles glitch out and don't actually show you where you're going to get latched on to. Now, ever since that fix in 2013, fix with big quotations, because it's not really a fix, isn't it? Is it if it doesn't fix anything? But it's said to have made the game 50 50, the barnacles work. I'd say more like 75-25, but I get your point. It's better than it used to be, as it used to be all barnacles were fucked up. But for some reason, a few of them work randomly, according to people who have played this game for way more time than they should have. So I don't know the chapter names for Half-Life 1, but I will tell you that one where you're on those treads that bring you around this factory and you have to jump from tread to tread, that mission doesn't even fucking work. It makes me confused on, did they even playtest this game? Did anybody boot up the game and just play through it once before they actually released it to the public? Obviously there was no bug testers, because if there was a bug tester, they would have ran into half the shit I ran into and been like, hey guys, what the fuck are you doing? But, no, no, there was, there, we'll, we'll already agree that there's no bug testers, but did anybody boot up the game, play through it, and tell anybody like hey this none of this shit works i can't imagine that this worked better on 2004 hardware i'm gonna be straight up with you i know quite a bit about old technology and how it works with modern technology you know how, how it meshes and what can go wrong right and you can't blame this on the game was being made in 2004 half this shit it, it, it there was no way that these problems could have arrived through a direct x upgrade or anything like that, as all of its pre- it's booting back to the old DirectX version that the game was originally intended for. So all this shit, I can only assume was in the game on launch. And I'm not the only one having these problems, by the way. As, again, I've seen on community posts and other people's videos in Half-Life Source that this is just across the board. Um, and, and that, that, like, treadmill one where you're going side to side in this industrial place, you saw it in the intro, it it just doesn't work, you can't see shit through the entire thing. I don't know how I got past that. My friend who was with me during the entire experience of that uh, latter half of the game, she was like, what the fuck? You know, how do you have the endurance to keep going through this? This is ridiculous what, what is happening right now, because you can't even see. I, I had just played through this segment so many times in Half-Life 1, because I was actually confused on how to get past it, and uh, th that I just knew where to go instinctually. I, I was basically playing blind for a good part of the mission. Another mission where all the fucking bombs are everywhere. Remember that one where you're sitting in that um, big room with all the like bombs everywhere and you're trying to sneak past the tripwires? Yeah, the skybox is broken casual, not working skybox, you know, just, just a cool, you know, just bleeding and stripping everything everywhere, just like in, in, when Gary's mod, when you just, like, fly out of bounds or whatever, because you like to do that, I liked to do that, and, and it, this game just wasn't fucking working, like, we didn't even, I didn't even have to fly out of bounds to see all that shit flying everywhere, you know, it was just part of the game, right, it, it was just there. Which is, which is so infuriating that they, they just released this game in this state. It, it's ridiculous. Alright, I'm gonna try to leave it alone with the glitches. I'm gonna give Morrowind a break on the glitches because tons of people have fixed them in their own code patches. I'm gonna say you've downloaded a code patch, which does exist for Half-Life Source to actually make the game work. I'm just gonna assume that you figured out how to install all that crap properly and whatever, right? And I'm gonna keep going with this because, it, it, funnily enough, it gets fucking worse. Past all the non-functional parts of the game and glitches, the worst part of this game isn't any of that shit. It's the movement. The movement. 
And I know that kind of sounds like a bitchy thing. Yeah, the movement's different, and the movement's honestly not that bad. It's just different from most of the other games I've ever played. It's not really akin to TF2 movement as much as it probably should be. It kind of feels like you're playing Counter-Strike on ice, where you're kind of just floating around even more than you are in Global Offensive and CSS and all of the Source games that you've played before. It really just feels weird and sticky and like icy, you're just flying away and then you're getting like stuck to weird things and it's just, it just feels terrible to move around and so imprecise in a game where it's, a lot of it is platforming, like a significant portion of the game is platforming. And by the way, in this Source Engine, you think that they would have recreated some of the puzzles and done them masterfully, right? And done them in such a cool way. Nope. Nope, they took out the only fucking puzzle that I could think of that would have, you know, gained from that, from it being in the Source Engine. And it's the one where you, you know, like, open uh, that little lock at the bottom of the pool and release all the barrels up, and it, you jump across the barrels to get across, right? That sounds like it might be cool in the Source Engine. Nope, they removed that puzzle from the game. Why? I don't know, they just removed it, they just put a bridge over it, and they even put barrels from Half-Life 2 under it. They put the Half-Life 2 blue barrel under it. I mean, I'm getting frustrated just thinking about it. What is wrong with you guys? If you guys aren't going to do anything, if you guys aren't going to make it cool, just unceremoniously don't make it cool. Don't be just a massive fucking asshole putting reminders of, hey, we could have made a better puzzle, but no, fuck you. We're going to just throw some barrels underneath this and you don't have to do shit with those barrels because you just run across. There's no point to what we're doing. Fuck you. You just spent, you know, ten dollars on this game or whatever, and we're gonna just destroy you with nonsensical removing of puzzles when it really could have just been done better. I don't remember Black Mesa that well, but I'm pretty sure they did it better than this fucking shit where you just, like, break a lock for no reason and just release the Half-Life 2 barrel models that float to the top of the water normally, when you could have just used those Half-Life 2 barrel models floating to the top of the water and jumping across those and I wouldn't be mad. I- you, you just fucked it up so hard for no goddamn reason and I have- it's just infuriating. Man, I've been talking about this too long. Let's go back to movement. Back to movement. Alright, movement. You can jump too high. That just makes half the puzzles in the goddamn game useless. When you can jump higher than the fucking walls, then it's not- there's no point. There was a, there was several points in the game where you're supposed to run across a minefield or whatever, or go through this massive like sort of maze thing, where there's guys sniping from the from the rooftops, and I just jumped right the fuck over the fence and blew up what I needed to blow up, and then walked right the hell out of there, because there was nobody who played this game, nobody who tried to jump over the fence, because you just can. It's not that hard to jump over the fence either. It's ridiculous, you're not having to do some crazy b-hop stuff, which is what you would probably have to do if you were trying to do this through Gold Source, but you don't have to do that crazy b-hop stuff, all you have to do is just jump the fuck over the fence, it's a crouch jump, it's simple, just do it. It's, it's just ridiculous, it makes half the puzzles in the fucking game useless. There were quite a few skips in Half-Life Gold Source, but a lot of them were complicated and only for people who wanted to beat the game as fast as possible. No, I just was thinking, hey, uh, I know I can jump higher than certain things and cer certain things in the previous game, so how about I just jump over it? And it was my first try. I, I was just trying something random and I just did it. It was easy. And it, it was just ridiculous. I mean, that was also in the intro right there. Like, right in the beginning, I was jumping over the fence where you're supposed to go through this, like, small place where you're supposed to find a minefield. And nope, I could just jump right the fuck over it, so what's the point in going through the minefield? if I can do that. Also, there was this point in the game where I jumped on top of a ventilation system 
that I just couldn't jump on top of in the previous game. I actually remember trying in the previous game because I couldn't figure out the puzzle, so I tried to jump on top of the ventilation shaft several times. Didn't work. First time I was trying to jump inside of the ventilation shaft, I accidentally jumped on top of the ventilation shaft in Half-Life Source. So I walked through the vent uh, on top of the ventilation shaft, jumped off of it, and I was out of the map. I literally had to no-clip back into where I was supposed to be because I was in an area that didn't have any of the elevators loaded. So I couldn't get out of there if I wanted to. I could reload the game, or I could no-clip back to where I was supposed to be because I got cheated out of being where I was supposed to be. It was so annoying that you can just jump higher. It's the simplest thing that they fucked up and it ruins half the game. It sounds like I'm nitpicking, but I'm really not. That's a really easy way to get lost because when you can jump on top of the ventilation shaft, it kind of feels like that's where you're supposed to go because that's a specifically weird part of the game where you have to backtrack. Backtracking isn't really that big of a thing in Half-Life 1, but you can go through that whole tunnel system and all you need to do in that tunnel system is get items. So you have to backtrack to where you originally were to go down the shaft even further so you can go into a different cubby hole. Now, I would see a beginner player going all the way through that and con being confused on where to go, just like me, jumping on top of the ventilation shaft, going back to a place that they were earlier and not being able to get out and thinking, Huh, well this is probably still where I'm supposed to go, let me run around here for a few hours, and it's just... Like, th that is a death trap for players. Alright guys, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm gonna end it here. Thank you for watching, um, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you wanna do. Um, this was a fun, fun little bit. I do have Half-Life Blue Shift on cue, making a video on it very soon. I have my notes right here. I'm gonna record some audio for it tomorrow. Um, thank you guys for sticking with me for the past couple Half-Life videos. I don't know if you guys are interested in that or what, but you guys are gonna get three Half-Life videos this month and hopefully Opposing Force next month, and I'll probably be done with Half-Life for a while after that. But um, thank you guys again. Uh, it's been fun. Um, I do like comments, so, and I do read all my comments, all, like, zero of them. Um, yeah. Good luck with your endeavors.